economist, Brian Breitberg, market watcher, Jonathan Honig, and conservative commentator, Gina Loudon, on the data that has a lot of Democrats crowing and uh, sort of tempting, I guess, Gina, uh, Donald Trump to, to top that. What do you make of that? Yeah, well, it's, it's you know, it, it shouldn't be, I think it was uh, Albert Camus who said uh, that if you, if you are in such an unfree world, your very existence sometimes becomes an act of rebellion. And I think that's sort of where Donald Trump has found himself. He is sort of by his very existence an act of rebellion because we've gotten so used to regulations, so used to taxation, so used to everything that pulls our economy down. And then just putting it all into a national debt that we just close our eyes to and pretend like it isn't happening. I don't think that's going to be the approach of Donald Trump. And I think the American people stand ready. And that's why we're seeing so many of these Im amazing improvements in the economy, honestly, in a projective way that I don't know if we've ever seen before. A president is even, even in office. But uh, one of the things that's amazing in this report is that the unemployment rate has been cut in more than half. Now, I know there's a real unemployment number and all that, and, and the party out of power always likes to make note of that. But, Jonathan, I mean, uh, to get much below that rate, uh, that's going to be some tough work for Donald Trump, won't it? Well, that, Neil, if you take Donald Trump at face value and what he's saying, that number is going to jump. Unemployment is going to jump dramatically. And I know he's not in power just yet, but even just taking the carrier deal, Neil, as an example, I mean, Republicans are applauding this. This is cronyism. This is exactly the type of maneuvers that kill an economy. And the fact that so many on the right, Steve Moore on down the line, Gina, are sanctioning this type of cronyism makes me very Why fearful for the future of this country. Why is it cronyism? Well, Neil, it's government picking winners and losers in the economy, by definition. But, I mean, that's not just it. Mike Pence and Donald Trump told the New York Times, Neil, that America is losing because of free market economics. And no Democrat could do that sort of damage to this country. Uh, Brian, what do you make of that? And then when you, uh, you teach kids and you try to teach them about the, the free market, the capitalism, and, of course, you know, there are many who argue through Republican and Democratic administrations, we've kind of lost sight of that. I mean, we have government that plays a role coddling, protecting, and shielding if you go through even the Federal Reserve and the role it's played in, in keeping things sort of propped up. Um, so is capitalism in its purest form, you know, not, not the form we're looking at now? No, look, over the past eight years, we've seen this time and time again. The Obama administration has propped up green energy companies, Solyndra. They've moved into the marketplace to dictate wages and overtime well, pay. What do you make, that, Brian, of what, what Jonathan just said, that this is Solyndra just as another favorite, though? I, I think he's got a point, Neil. I really do think he has a point. Look, this is a special break from Washington for a particular company. That's not the way you're going to grow the economy long term. That might put a 1,000 people in Indiana back to work. It's not going to put hundreds of thousands across the country back to work. You need broad-based reform, regulatory reform, tax reform. He needs to focus on that. If he stays with these carrier deals, you're not going to get that. You're just not going to get it. I think one of the things he was selling them on, Gina, was this no should bear with me. And of course, the incentives were state-based in Indiana here, the $7 million over 10 years. But having said that, I, I think part of the deal, and I don't know this for sure, but I would imagine, is any other company that might be entertaining leaving here, it was kind of a subtle imploring hey, uh, yeah. rates are going to come down. Uh, we're going to see, uh, I'm talking about tax rates, we're going to see fewer regulations. Give me time to give you less reason to leave in the first place. So what is wrong with that? Yeah, I don't think there's anything wrong with it, although I do understand the caution for crony capitalism, but I really don't think that's where President-elect Trump is going with this. And I think that's evidenced by the fact that, first of all, Carrier has plenty of skin in this game. Let's not forget, they had already built the plant. They're going to have to close the plant they built in order to do this. So there's plenty of skin in the game for them. And I also think it's important to note that President-elect Trump had no relationship with them prior to this, unlike deals like matter. Solyndra that we saw out of the, Clinton, out yeah, of the Obama matter. administration. It, it does matter. It does matter, and no. here's why. President-elect Trump is an unconventional president. He's going to be an unconventional president. He's a, we know he's this, a and crony. I think Neil's right. No, this is about no. sending a message. He's a crony. This is about sending a message no. of he, keeping jobs in America. But this is a totally conventional <laughs> move. This is a totally conventional <laughs> move. This is what we've seen time and again. This is where the swamp 
comes from. Special breaks for special companies. You want him to the president gets a good and, and, and headline. And, and, and let me just, can I make one point? Let me just make one point. Yeah. And, and sure. our, this, gentleman makes, this gentleman says it. We've seen this before. Neil, we saw this under President Kennedy in the early 1960s. President Kennedy started threatening the steel industry, right, to, to prop up prices, Indeed. to prop up scale. You know what you saw? You saw what was called the Kennedy swoon, the Kennedy slide, a 25% drop in the stock market because of these exact type of anti-capitalist threats. You want to sanction this? You want to applaud this? Go ahead. But it's not free market. We should explain back in, in 1962 what he was doing. U.S. Steel led an effort to increase steel prices literally overnight. The president put the kibosh on but it at the time and, and sort of does, you know, made them cower to, to reduce that. Here's what I'll, I'll disagree with you, Brian, and I guess with my friend Jonathan, and, and agree with Gina here. What is wrong with making a pitch for American jobs, regardless of the sector? What if he sets a precedent that it's not beneath him to call a CEO of a company and say, what can I do to keep those jobs here? I don't care what industry you're in. Let's say he did the same with solar. Let's say he did the same with a conventional fossil fuel company. Let's say he did the same with an air conditioner concern that he will do with a plane manufacturer. Anything and everything the most powerful representative in the United States can do to keep jobs in the United States. What is wrong with that? Because here's the thing, Neil. Guess who doesn't get access to Donald Trump? It's the small and medium-sized business who doesn't have a pipeline to Washington. Donald Trump's meeting with a carrier, which is a subsidiary of United Technologies. Ten percent of their revenue comes from the DOD. Look, this is big with big. This is exactly the problem with a swamp in Washington. If you're connected, you get a deal. If you're not connected, if you're the small guy, you don't get a deal. He should push jobs, but he should push broad-based reform. Tax cuts for everybody. Regulatory cuts for but everybody. But he's doing that. He's no, doing that, right? So, no, so not why doing that. Is announcing, Jonathan, if a company is announcing these jobs are gone, they're going to Mexico, uh, it, there's nothing you can do about it. And a president elect in this case, not even a president yet, comes back and says, How can we not make this happen? How can we reverse this? And make He's wrong for doing that. Why? Yes, he's wrong for doing that. Neil, he's, the purpose uh, of you know, government. If I were president, is, I would do everything in my power to keep people to, from to losing what? their jobs. I really would. Really, Neil? Would you would you enslave other people so that oh, your favorite John, group you doesn't lose their job? You don't even believe what you're saying, buddy. Enslave. No, I, Neil, I, I do. You know, I would make a pitch for, for, I I would make make the, for the local 7-Eleven not getting rid of the hot dog guy. That's what all I would right. do. Well, you know, <laughs> Neil, just as, just as Obama made us all tear out over the teachers, now uh, President-elect Trump is doing it over the, the steel workers. The purpose of government, Neil, is not to create jobs. It's to protect rights. Has the right, has the conservatives just forgotten that completely now that they're the mob in charge? What do you think of that, Gina? There's a huge difference between government jobs and jobs that are in the private sector. And as to the accusation that this isn't going to happen for small and medium-sized businesses, of course it is. It is the very foundation of President-elect Trump's economic plan is to cut regulations and cut taxes. Well, that's what you hope, Gina. That's what you, you provide an yeah, environment that, that? will, uh, as the professor went at, you provide an environment that provides opportunity for all types of businesses of all sizes. All I'm saying is there is a difference when big companies announce big layoffs or, or big transitions to other countries. And as leader of the country, I think it would behoove you to do everything you can to avoid that sort of stuff. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, but you know, what it ends up with, Neil, is these companies line up in Washington and say, look, here's the deal, President Trump. We won't move jobs if, if you give us a break and it'll give you a great headline and make you look like you're a champion president what here. What if it was a Teddy Roosevelt, you know, speak softly but carry a big stick kind of a message? I'm not doing squat for you, but I could make but, life hell for you and the bad PR Neil, would hurt you trying to sell your products if you're tainted by the notion that you were just trying to say, a few bucks when in fact staying here might be in your long-term interest. What's it's wrong not with saving a few bucks. It's being competitive on a world stage. Mm -hmm. Carrier well, has to compete think with Carrier with and and those numbers and came to the Neil, conclusion Neil, this Neil, might work? This wasn't Neil, that, though. No. This wasn't that. Let me just this say, well, maybe we'll make one job. Jonathan first. Gone. Jonathan first. And Gina, I will go to you. Go ahead. I'll, I'll say very quickly, Neil, you said it. Isn't walk softly but carry a big stick okay no it's not the stick is force the stick is guns and the president-elect is using it against innocent american citizens so you would let that's a company moral, just right. go and willy-nilly do what it wants not even consider maybe the benefits that aren't so obvious to staying here 
to working here. We accept it as a given. The companies leave here for a variety of reasons, not pointing out that an incoming administration might have a whole new economic policy and a set of goals yeah, that would be very, very conducive to that business staying here. What's wrong with They don't with have a whole new policy deal. Look, well, they, have look the same, they have the same old policies, cronyism, and an economy can be judged by the number of jobs that are destroyed, not those that are saved well, or created. Well, you know what? That there are 1,100 individuals in Indiana who are going to have a pretty good Christmas, and they're assured of their jobs, yeah. and no one gave a rat's ass about yeah. them prior to this. There's, and, and there's your appeal to emotion. No, and if that's your emotion. argument, I think that's pretty... No, it's, oh, Donna, no, if you were to Jonathan. lose your job and no one spoke out in your defense or tried to save you, is it pure emotion yeah. to say you're worth the struggle? I think you're worth Neil, the struggle. I, you're I, telling me Neil. that you think it's just <laughs> emotion for me to say you're, you're worth the struggle. Well, you are. I fight for you a Neil. little bit. Look, Good. I did got... lose my job, and no one came to save me. So I, I, I hope you would fight for me. Well, Neil, that depends what day it is. Neil, let Donald Trump can fight for these workers, but he has to do it in a way that it benefits everybody, not just people who work for big companies that have a direct line to the White House. How do you That's know he won't? How here. do you know he won't? You don't well, know. We want him to do that, but in the meantime, it doesn't make any sense for the rest of us to put Carrier on an unlevel playing field with their competitors. Why should they get a special break when other people in their industry no don't, Neil? There's no direct line, though. There's no what are you talking line. about? You're you just talked to the president. Into this. You're writing things into this story that weren't here. These jobs were already gone. All he did was go in and save them. There was no relationship preceding this. President-elect Trump didn't even know this guy. <laughs> he literally saw the guy on it TV and was like, oh my gosh, what can I do to save those jobs? Make make it cronyism. Phone made a phone Gina, call. just be... Just because he's How not the direct beneficiary. If there was no pre-existing relationship, and there, and there was no visit from Senator anyone where well, the clear, John, to You would not Albert, get involved at Albert all. Ask Albert Camus. You think ask it's, Albert you, Camus about cronyism. Oh, for God's sake. Uh, you, you would not get involved <laughs> at all. You'd let him go. You wouldn't even fight for him. You wouldn't see. It's just grand economics. That's the way the world bounces. No interference. No role at all. Freedom. Freedom. No, you, right. You fight for them, but you fight in a way that preserves long-term benefits. It's not just about the short-term story, Neil. Well, I don't know. <laughs> but I it's think not the just about the short-term story. Really important. Short-term goes way beyond talking about a company's quarterly performance. The, the, those people are going to be working pretty hard. The message sent to, to a lot of manufacturers and those who work at them is there is someone in the White House, coming to the White House, who has our back and cares. The message just sent to manufacturers is be careful if you start a business here because if you do something the president doesn't like, he's going to oh, come I after you. I don't think you believe that. I, I do believe. I, I absolutely believe that. He threatened analogy. to do that. No, I Neil, believe he, that. He, he, I mean, he has talked again and again about threatening CEOs. This yep. was a staple, a big a cheer line of his. So, I mean, Neil, respectfully, it's kind of, well, we don't know what he's going to do. He said exactly what he's going to do. He's already doing it, calling CEOs. CEOs threatening, threatening CEOs, making special deals. So this if you became president, Jonathan, if you ever became president, you would say, when you hear announcements of jobs that are going to go, 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 go. Do whatever you got to do, guys. Capitalism rules. Yeah. These workers drool. No, no. That's not the alternative. That's a false dilemma. You well, can that's say, wait, Jonathan. That's heartless. I, well, well, yeah, I, that's no, not no, what absolutely. Trump has to say here. Neil, Neil what's the, wait, let me just say, what's the point, Neil, of having principles if you don't live by them? Well, what's the point of having principles if you're willing to see so many lose their jobs to uphold them. Yeah, well, Neil, we, this country was once 98% agricultural, so we can only hope that President Trump would have been around back then to save all those agricultural jobs. Neil, you could be working in a field now and not sitting on TV, respectfully, sir. Right. Well, you'd lose weight. You're all right about that. <laughs> Guys, thank you very, very much.